Oh yeah, it's all coming together. Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host Aaron and for today's video we're headed to the world of Last Epoch. Mike, one of the senior developers at EHG, held his normal Friday Q&A live stream on Twitch, which means I get to bring you Dev Chat 151. As always, Mike answered lots of great questions from the community and gave us a teaser for the future of a skill that is getting updated, which we will talk about. But before we jump into that, huge shout out to a new partner to Action RPG, the sponsor of this video, The Crimson Market. Now, if you don't know about the Crimson Market, they've got some awesome technology and tools on their website and Discord for trading inside of action RPGs. But they also have the Crimson Club, one of the coolest things you will see. I consider it a modern day gaming club where they give away a custom PC every single month. They normally do the drawing on Woody or Rax's channel that are also partners with the Crimson Market. And yes, that PC you see on screen is correct. That is an 11th hour game, Last Epoch Clock PC. And they said in the future they're working on a new insane Last Epoch PC. Right now, the Crimson Market has the golden ticket where you can enter the club for 30 days free. This is what I always tell people to do. Try it out, see if you like it. And then after that, there's lots of different tiers. Their last drawing, they gave away a Starforge PC. Absolutely sick. One of the most expensive and coolest computers they have ever given away. Huge shout out to Starforge with working with the Crimson Market. All right. Let's jump into Dev Chat 151. Our first question is around a new roadmap. Are there plans on updating the roadmap for 1.2, or do you guys not currently know what's happening? It's going to be able to do so. Yeah, there are. I've I've seen a. I don't know when it's going to happen, um, but I have seen some like uh, prototype options for roadmap updates. Um, so I know pe people are people are working on on uh, like another infographic roadmap style. Um, I don't know uh, when we're gonna get that exactly, but um, you know it, that type of communication I think is really important. It's it's and I mean we're seeing some of the issues with it right now in the sense that we we made one and you know like stuff changes stuff changes pretty quickly. It's one of the things about our studios we are pretty. And it's not in the programming sense, but in the just general sense, we are pretty agile. I mean, we do agile stuff as well, but it, yeah. <laughs> it, it, there's, a, there's a whole other term there, but it doesn't matter. So the point is, is that like we do, um, we do we do change things on the fly quite a bit of like in in response to feedback, in response to um, new ideas people have. You know, there's there's a lot that happens pretty quickly, and having a roadmap that goes that reaches far into the future can leave you open to having to change that roadmap and you know people set expectations and things like that which is tricky because you want to you want to uphold those expectations but at the same time you want to just do whatever's best for the game right um i'm gonna pause mike right there now this question was asked multiple times last week and his response was I'm sure we're going to get out another roadmap, but right now I haven't seen anything. Now he has seen multiple prototypes, which would lead me to believe we're going to be getting a roadmap soon. This is a question I've been seeing over and over again. Now, as you know, Last Epoch has pushed Season 2 to Q1 2025, and it appears some of the competition are doing the same thing, which is making people worried. Listen to this. As far as I know, EHG is trying to release seasons in a time frame outside of your competitors' releases in the RPG genre. Now that I have seen that GGG is planning to push PoE 1's next season to Q1 2025, I'm a little worried what EHG will do with the release of Season 2 for LE. Can you elaborate a little bit about this? Um, I, I haven't heard any information of anything changing at all. Kind of the short version. Um... You know, like, the, the, the options are, um, well, A, A, we don't actually know when it's going to be. So we, we don't know the exact date. Q1 2025, there's there's three months there. So, like, the, the two of us could be targeting completely different points in that three-month period. Uh, and it's totally fine. There's nothing to worry about type thing, you know? That's, that's scenario one. <laughs> uh, scenario two is we've targeted basically the same spot. And we're gonna overlap, and it's probably on us to get out of the way. Uh, if, if we're talking about who's got more 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 market pull uh, available to them, um, and so then our options are 
like try and release earlier if we find out when the exact date is early enough that we can do that uh tons of problems with that M namely in just that if we're releasing it early we're doing it either by cutting content or by skipping testing steps which i know both of those things uh are are like horrible horrible propositions for almost everyone involved um you know like so, so i i don't think that's super appealing for us um and then like the other option is delaying the content you know which i, I doubt many people want either right um so we've, we've kind of got to weigh what our best options are how we're going to handle that how like how close is the overlap uh, is there any overlap um you know there's there's a lot of there's a lot of information we don't know um, and a lot of information we do know that the public also doesn't know so it's it's tricky to um come up with the best answer to this and it's even more tricky to answer this question um because i can't really say anything but as far as i know nothing's changed from our plans um for this for 1.2 Question continues. 1.2 was delayed for the uh, for the upcoming ARPG landscape uh, and an engine upgrade mostly. However, now that that was upcoming ARPG landscape was also delayed partially into 2025, is it now right in the middle of your public release window for Q1 2025? Do you think you all will, might have jumped the gun on delaying since you all are in a similar situation as before now? Uh, or just generally th general thoughts on how you would handle long delay and things each she learned slash has anything changed for on future delays um i don't think anything's changed uh necessarily for future delays at this point it's i think we're gonna wait to see how it shakes out um we're, we're still we're still in the middle of it uh so it's not much to look back on just yet the uh i i don't regret the change we made a lot of it had to do with changing uh, a lot of it also had to do with changing like what content we're targeting for the next patch um based on pretty heavily on feedback we got from 1.1 on which feed, which content we should be focusing on for 1.2. Um, so there's a bit of a pivot there as well. Um, yeah. Well. Okay. PoE, maybe, will make their season or their league launch based upon D4 Season 7. So then you've got D4 Season 7. You've got Titan Quest 2 early access. You might have another Torchlight season and you've got a POE league. And who knows what we're going to get as far as major content updates or patches from Path of Exile 2. And then I don't even look at the calendar for what like AAA games might be coming in Q4. I'm guessing it is going to be packed. And I do think. Uh, this is a little bit of a problem. It's going to keep coming up for EHG is that, you know, delaying trying to find the perfect time. I mean, it's important to launch at the right time. Obviously, you're not going to drop your update on the day a competitor that is larger is dropping theirs. But at some point, you know, you kind of got to rip the bandaid off. You are talking from season one, what we're currently in to season two. It'll be like seven or eight months, maybe nine months. That is just for perspective. That is four seasons almost of D4 in between a last epoch season. And obviously D4 is the biggest, like not the best example, but just for perspective, you know, the core audience of last epoch is going to be starved for content. And of course, we're excited for season two. Everything we've heard so far sounds like it is going to be amazing, but this is definitely something that they are going to need to figure out from a timing perspective and what they're going to do into the future. All right. This answer made me happy. Do you plan to do a PTR for the next season launch? Feels like a bit too much bug to get. Feels like a bit. Feels like a little bit too much bug get past QA and maybe we can help track them down. PS, you seem tired. You know how to work yourself in the teams for us. <laughs> Uh, ouch. Uh, I'm tired because I am a, uh, young father. Not, uh, not the game, I think, at this point, but yeah, uh, fair enough. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, we do have a, a PTR. Oh, it's not PTR, it's PTR, because it's private. 
um, not public, but yes, we do have a, um, a, a community tester program that we run. Um, I don't know if there's, I don't know if we're inc like, uh, opening up more spots right now or not, but we do run a community tester program and have for years now and are continuing to run it. I think there's a build that's going out to them sometime kind of soon, actually, for new 1.2 content. What? 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 That is the first I heard of that. A new build coming to PTR soon where I'm going to be able to play under NDA. I won't be able to share. Don't try and get anything out of me. Season two. I'm ready. If EHG is ever running out of money, this will make them a boatload. Are there any plans for skins and MTX for the Echo of a World map area between Echoes? I mean, that's really cool. Yeah, that was that's something that was pitched a little while ago that I love the idea of. Because um, it kind of, it almost would act like a hideout in a sense. Um, but wouldn't be like out of the way, which I think is the big problem with most hideouts. Um, especially when you're playing with friends, it'd be a really natural progression to, to show it off. Because it would just sort of like happen whenever you're the host. Um... I think it also makes a lot of sense to do it there because of, like, lore reasons. Basically, a new skill teaser. And you tease a little what stuff is coming for Sentinel. Sure. Here is a, uh, here's a node. Here's an upcoming node. Now, this is, we, we're far enough out that I'm going to put a little big uh, asterisk beside this and say, you know, it's, this it, it could be, could change, could be rebalanced, could be, you know, like numbers can fluctuate a little bit, but um, hopefully this will whet the appetite a touch. So when you jump forwards in time, all of your devouring orbs are pulled towards you and... He can't see it because it's too small. When you jump forward in time, all your devouring orbs are pulled towards you and trigger a void rift. A volatile reversal costs additional mana. Now, it's already been leaked to us that Volatile Reversal is basically going to be a new skill. It's going to be getting a new skill tree, or at least a changed skill tree. And this is one of the nodes that's going to work with basically Auto Bomber for Devouring Orbs. That is going to be able to create Void Rifts and pull the orbs to you. Very, very cool. My current guess is we are getting Procedural Generation Areas. I don't know if it's dungeons in season two. All uh, right, what are we seeing? You could also have little mini challenge dungeons too, where the enemies are a little bit harder, but a little better rewards. Maybe even secret places like that, that you can go back and farm towards the end game. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what the dungeons system is in the game, yeah. We just, I think the, a big, the big thing there is, and this is what I was talking about earlier in the stream, is that the actual like experience of interacting with the dungeon content right now uh, leading up to the bosses is is not awesome because we're not doing proper procedural generation systems. It's it's this like pseudo generation where um, there's a fixed map and blockers get dropped in place to cover up certain paths. And I, I think people really don't like that. I think that there's a, um, a, a very heavy psychological cost that we pay on that style of procedural generation. Um, that I do not understand. Um, like, like not, not a sense of like, oh, I don't understand how that could be a thing. Like, I, I, I get that it's a problem for people. I just don't, uh, I don't understand the phenomena well enough to fix it directly um, without just fixing, fixing it, without just fixing the actual uh, procedural generation to be more similar to what you'd expect in a game like this, which I think is, is the, the plan. Which I think is the plan this next question really is spot on and it's around how scary dots are at endgame uh, although or because most defensive layers that you can build through gear protect you against hits dot damage seems to be the biggest struggle when it comes to tankiness in the end game uh, either ailments or dots pools both seem to be the biggest source of damage we take is this intended and if it is can we expect more ways to deal with it in the future um I don't, I don't think it's like strictly intended that, hey, the scariest thing are dots, you know? Um, but I do think it's important that there are dots that are scary. 
I think scary dots, especially um, as 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 dot pools that can be spawned underneath the player, is a really good tool for. Um, and it's something that people mention a lot is the hey, like we want some reason why um, it's difficult to play a ranged character. You know, like like some skill element in uh, player positioning when playing a ranged character uh, compared to playing a melee character, because quite often you get um, more. Uh, Natural, just just naturally hit by things as a melee character, which I think can be frustrating because it can seem like it's it's harder to play as a melee character, and, and you know in some cases it is. Um, so I think that there's uh, there's there's a lot of room for I, I think really powerful ground dot placement things like effects like that is a really good way to say like hey ranged character move, <laughs> you know. Um, Whereas, like, a giant melee slam is a better way to generally say, hey, melee character, move. Um, and... Uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I think that there's... I think it's good that there are really dangerous dots uh, in the game. Um, do I think they always need to be the most dangerous thing? No. Um... I think that having new defensive options that let you proactively deal with dots would be really good. Um, I think they, they need some sort of like... Just just straight up slapping an affix in that's just like, oh, less damage taken from dots. Um, or something like that is, is probably not the best option. Um... As the only thing to do if, if like if we were hypothetically trying to combat that situation. I think most people agree that dots being scary is fine. They're supposed to be scary. I think really what Mike got to at the end is that just give us ways to combat it. So right now you can use an Oracle amulet amulet. You can use armor also works for damage over time. It's just so limited where you can find ways to prevent dots from one-shotting you. All right, everyone. Unfortunately, we have come to the final question for Dev Chat 151. Mike, as always, thank you for your Friday live streams. The community truly appreciates it. So great to be able to get our questions answered from such an expert like you. This last question is focused around quality of life, and we're going to let Mike go off on his soapbox for a little bit. Please like, share, and subscribe if you think I've earned it. Today is day 44 of my subathon. Make sure you come by the stream and say hi. Best way to support is Patreon, and we do a game giveaway every two weeks, and all the community events are through Discord, which are linked in the description. I'm done. Mike, take it away. Uh, how do you feel about more quality of life into the game? Things like auto loot, partial respec, uh, partial respec of passives, etc. Partial respec of passives. You do that already? Um, I I think that some things that I I have I have a bone to pick with the term quality of life. I I really do not like that term. Um, I know it's it's so pedantic and like pointless to to go off on it, but like every once I feel like I haven't ranted about quality of life in a while. Um, it's it's one of those terms that I think it's it it has like intrinsic properties to the term quality of life like why would you not want to make the quality of my life better it's sort of the feeling of like like of course every quality everything that gets labeled quality of life has to go in because it's just mean to not put it in it's sort of like the vibe i get from the term quality of life that's why that's i'm not a big fan of the term in general um and i think i think there's there's a lot of terms i, I think there's a lot of uh feature requests that get labeled as quality of life that are not quality of life um, and I don't like that. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think that, you know, quality of life features are inherently great for players. And, you know, we, we, we love putting them in. We love getting them in and, uh, improving the quality of life for our players playing the game. Like that's, that's, that's a no brainer. Awesome thing to do. Yeah. Um, I, I think the line gets blurred really quickly as soon as you have things that actually make gameplay changes. Um, and sometimes the things that get lost when quality of life quality of life uh, features get implemented isn't always obvious right away. 
Um, and I think it can be unfortunate when it when it actually takes something important away from the game. So it's it's a, I think it's a tricky uh, conversation to navigate sometimes. Uh, but generally speaking, yeah, we, we love putting quality life things in the game, and you know there's there's lots of features that we we discuss really frequently. Um, you know things things like for example. Uh, like a key, a key inventory uh, specifically, so you're not like organizing individual keys in your inventory manually, things like that. I would call that a quality of life update, um, and is the sort of thing that you know, like we're, we're, we are targeting. Um, oh, I'm not popping out of form. That was so close. Uh, what was it? Auto loot. I think auto loot is one of those ones that I would not call quality of life. I think auto loot fundamentally changes the game for a lot of players, and I think it causes, um, I think, I think it causes, uh, issues in, you know, like, I, I think I would enjoy, and I, this, it, it's different for a lot of people, this is why it's so, such a hard topic to talk about, but like, I, I think I would enjoy certain games less if they had auto loot. Um, And I don't think that's always obvious to to be able to see right away. Um, and like, I, I can actually think of an ARPG that had auto loot that I think was a huge problem. It was one of the like top three things I would change about that game was that it had auto loot. I would turn it off. 